Okay, follow with me. Just imagine. It's quiet. You hear the rooster crowing and clucking a great find to his hens and the soft gurgles of your goats rumen and the constant soft chewing as they eat their grain. It's peaceful and you're just so excited to know that this white stuff is going to be giving you and your family a whole food that is nutritious and nutrient dense. But right now, you may be like I was 10 years ago. You are getting goats because goats. <laughs> and aren't yet thinking about milk. Maybe you're just getting weathers or, or maybe you don't own a buck and aren't set up for kidding and raising goats. But I think it's important to think about the possibilities. If you own goats, there is a possibility that someday you may be milking them, right? I mean, from my perspective, it's very possible. My name is Delcy and I'm the content creator behind A Life of Heritage and I want to walk you through what you will need to start milking so that you will really feel prepared. You need to know what it takes to get your goat to the point of being able to milk and then what you will need to actually milk, how to care for the milk after and so on. So the first thing to know is what does it take for a goat to go into milk and how long are they in milk? If you want your doe to go into milk, you will need to breed her first. She will be pregnant for about five months and then will kid and you could potentially have two to four baby goats. They will drink her milk and after several months you will wean them and most likely sell the kids. And then you will have a doe in milk. A doe can actually continue to be in milk for several years, but if you choose to breed her again, you will need to stop milking her several months before she kids again, and then the kids will get that milk for several months after they are born. Let's head on out to the milking barn and I'll walk you through what you will need to actually milk your goat. We feed our goats banana. <laughs> no, don't jump. We feed our goats banana peels because that's how we give them copper boluses, and so it's a good way to kind of train them, and they <laughs> love them. They will fight over them. <laughs> The first thing you will need is a milking stand. I guess you wouldn't absolutely need one. I have milk sitting on a bucket with a goat standing on the ground, but a milking stand will make it more comfortable for you. It will get your goat off the ground so you aren't bending over as much. And it gives them a hat, a head catch for them to eat their grain and so they can't just walk around in circles. Before we begin the milking process, I wanna talk about mastitis tests. These are important to have on hand. Your goat may get mastitis and you will want to know immediately so that you can begin treatment. Mastitis is an affection in the udder or mammary glands of, in this case, a goat. And sometimes a goat will not even show any symptoms of having mastitis and it will cause a loss of production. So having these tests on hand is important so you can test every once in a while to stay on top of what's happening with your goat herd. As I do one of these tests and as I finish this test, I will use a sheet in my goat health and information binder to track when I've used it and what the result was. There is no way that I could ever keep track of all this information in my head and, and expect to remember it all. So keeping track of it in on a worksheet and, and like one in my health and information binder is really key to being able to keep your sanity and to keep your goats healthy. Um, because you'll know, you'll be able to look back and say, I did this test then and it was negative. That was, you know, two months ago. I better do one again. Or this is when I've 
and I trimmed my goat's hooves and this is when I've given them this and that so it just keeps track of everything and makes your life a whole lot simpler because you know what's going on and what you've already done and when you've done it you will also need grain. This is not only to give the goat something to do while you are milking, but will also give them the energy to produce milk and the energy they need if they're um, actually growing kids inside of them. So grain is an important aspect of your milking procedure. After you have your goat set up in the milking stand and they're eating their grain, you will need to clean their udder. This is an important step. They may have laid in some urine, uh, soap, straw, or poop, and you don't want that to be on your hands as you're milking. So you want to clean their udder and focus on the very end of their orifice down here um, and get that very end cleaned off where that hole is. This is important because you want to make sure that there's no bacteria on the end and that it is all cleaned off and so that as you're milking, that bacteria won't be getting into the milk. So then after you've cleaned it well all the way around and the bottom, you're going to want to use a strip cup. I just use a little cup that I keep out here and then I throw the milk, extra milk that goes into it to the chickens. Um, and, but what basically it's just a little cup that you squirt about five times into and once you've done that you can start milking so that strip cup is also important so not only have you cleaned your udder well to get off the bacteria off the ends that strip cup also catches any bacteria that may have gotten into uh, the very end of the teat of the of the goat so you're just getting out anything that might be in there and then you can start milking because this video is mostly about just the supplies you will need to get started milking i'm not going to walk you through how to milk but i will link a video below that will walk you through um, the the steps how it works and the, the best way to actually milk your goat. So you can find that link below. After you're done milking, you can clean the udder again, and you can then, if you desire, you can um, dip it in like a tea dip. And basically this will protect any bacteria from getting in to that open, that open uh, orifice on the end of the cheek. So, Basically, you want to milk your goats at a time that, that she, she's out of her grade. You want to be milking your goats at a time when they are not going to be laying down right afterwards because for about 45 minutes, I believe it is, after you milk, the end of their tea is open. It doesn't close for a bit of time. And so you don't want any bacteria to be entering in. And so that's one reason you can do a teat dip uh, that will help keep bacteria out and then making, you know, feed them. Make sure that they're eating for a while after you're done milking. That will help as well. I'm all done milking my four goats and I've got my milk here um, in my stainless steel milking bucket. Stainless steel is the best option to use when you're handling fresh milk. The inside of the bucket doesn't have any seams that will catch bacteria and it is easy to clean. Clean. So that is just one other thing that you really will want to um, use is that stainless steel milking bucket. And you can find them online. I will link all of this information and the different items that you will need below. And that way you can just look at, just kind of get an idea of what the pricing would be for each of these items. So I'll link that down below for easy reference. And now you need to know that once you have your goats milked, you need to handle your milk very properly. It is important that the milk cool down as quickly as possible. Around here, it's winter right now. It's actually, we're having a beautiful day. It's like almost 50 degrees, but we've been having in the like single digits below zero this last week so it's been really cold um, and that is good for your milk when you're milking because it does um, cool down so quickly and that is what you want you want to cool your milk down as quickly as possible so there are things that you can do 
to um, help cool it down quickly and what we'll do now is head inside and I'll show you how to uh, take care of the milk after you've milked. After you get inside from milking your goat, you're gonna need to get out your funnel, your strainer, and your milk filter. Once this is put together uh, and you are straining your milk, it will catch all of this, this filter will catch all of the dirt, the debris, the hair, anything that might have fallen into the milk while you were milking. And so this is what catches it. And once you have filtered your milk and it's in your jars, you will have good, 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 fresh, raw goat milk. I have found these half gallon jars to be the absolute best for storing milk. They are the perfect size, they're easy to handle, even my small hands can, can hold on to one. They're easy to pour, they're easy to manage in the, the fridge, they don't take up a lot of room, and they're, they're just a great size. So this is what I use when um, I'm, I'm storing my milk. This is how we keep our milk in our fridge. So once you get to this point, you have your filter put together like this. You're going to put it on top here, make sure it's tight, and then you will just begin to pour your milk into and through the funnel and the milk filter. And as it goes through, it will catch all of the any hair or dirt or debris that might be in there. From this milking of my four goats, one of them is a first freshener. Uh, I got just um, a little bit over one gallon. And this will go immediately into the fridge. One thing that you can do is after you put it through and strain it, you can actually put it in the freezer for about a half an hour and that will cool it down quickly. I have found this not to work very well for me because just with so much going on, it's hard to remember to get it out. And I've actually forgotten and had a disaster of a one of these wonderful glass jars breaking after it froze because I forgot about it. But basically the idea is, is that you want to get your milk as cold as possible, as quickly as possible. So you will want to have your fridge as cold as possible you know not so that it's freezing vegetables and freezing things in there necessarily but as cold as possible that will keep your milk fresh for as long as possible and we've had milk still fresh at 10 days so if you keep your fridge cold and you've handled your milk properly from the beginning um, you will have milk that will last quite a long time once you have your lid on it's very easy to mark what day it is. You can use one of these erasable dry erase markers on the top and you can just put the date. And that way it is easy to wipe off, it's easy to tell what day it is, that it, what day it's from, and it's easy to clean off. You can use the lids again and you don't have anything sticky, messy, or hard to get off. So be sure to label which day you have your that you milked your goats and that, that the milk is from and then you won't ever have to guess which is oldest. So that's just a helpful tip as you store your milk. I hope that this information has inspired you and shown you that milking goats is doable. It's easy. It doesn't require a huge amount of resources and supplies and it produces fresh, raw, good food for your family. Not to mention the relaxing time of that it gives you with your goats. All of that is a serious plus for me. Once again, you can find links to these items that I've mentioned below and you can just check on their pricings just to see where it fits and what you can expect. And truly, I wish you the best in this milking journey. But your goat journey isn't over. Tomorrow's lesson is critical because it will talk you through what you will need in your medicine cabinet for your goats. It's information that you won't regret knowing and you won't regret having all of those medications on hand for those emergency situations that may arise. So I will see you in tomorrow's very important lesson. See you then.